Welcome to Nerd Sports. Today we're going to talk about the interesting world of cricket. Right? You know what else is interesting about cricket? And I and, and I this is something that I've noticed for like a very long time. Okay. But as I'm scrolling, because you know we were talking about off camera before the episode started, uh, the uh, uh, Kenny Maines interview with uh, Aaron Rodgers. Oh yeah, that was freaking hilarious. And you know, and, and you click on those. I can't believe, or it's ten facts you can't believe. Type you know those 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 links you'll see on basically every news article, right? Something something about Chelsea Clinton's marriage just doesn't add up. She is an ugly, ugly human being. No, no. I mean, let, let, let's let's not. I said kind of cute. I didn't say like you know. I would stalk her for the rest of her life. Cute. I mean, one, she's got her mother's smile. Two, the whatever else she's got going on up there, a does not belong to Bill. Two. I mean, I think that she's probably. Oh, there's a there's a. She's probably the number one contender. To steal the title of horse face away from Sarah Jessica Parker. That's pretty, pretty. Uh, I mean, I mean, literally. That's a pretty good leap there, buddy. N- no. No. Have you seen, ever heard of the conspiracy with that? Oh yeah, That's no. A, I mean, everybody but, knows. Okay. But this is a sports show. This isn't about conspiracy theories on the political stage. I mean, everybody knows that Hillary Clinton, back when she was Hillary Rodham, whatever. I don't care. I mean, that whole family can just. I mean, <clears throat> whatever. Nobody cares. Oh, well, there there are people who do care. I'm just not one of them. Okay. Anyway, digressing, moving on. Do, do, uh, biggest uh, news that's happened, uh, I guess, the last 12 hours, because the way I was looking at a lot of this stuff, is Aaron Rodgers finally came to and uh, spoke about the reason why he wants to get out of uh, football. Mm. Or get out. He wants to get out of Green Bay, and, it's, and, it, Bay. and a lot of it... I'm, okay, now... The general manager uh, in Green Bay, it has been no secret for any amount of time that the general manager is responsible for, they have a big port, a big port, big part, I can speak English, they have a big part in the handling of personnel, the bringing in of free agents, uh, they've got a lot of say-so in the drafting of, of prospects during the NFL draft, things of that nature. Um, however, the interview or the, uh, the interview with the, uh, the, the general manager for Green Bay, he, he's not very well liked. Um, there, there, there were issues that were start there you know, that were stemming, uh, in Green Bay for a very long time before this new, you know, before the current general manager got there. Um, I believe his first year was like 2007. And that was Brett Favre's final year with the team. So um, Brett Favre was already, he was already voicing his displeasure with the organization. I mean, even though that's the organization that ultimately. Brought him the Super Bowl. You know, brought him the Super Bowl, got his ring. Um and and got you know I mean it's I mean it's it's, it's what's you know I mean it, his Hall of Fame bus should include a Packers jersey okay let's just put it that way yeah all right so that being said um, you know you're gonna have two different camps uh, within the Packer Nation okay one is gonna be the current general manager needs to go the other one is yeah while he's not the best in the game he has done A B and C. So maybe we need to give him some merit. Um, but, I mean, do, there, there's no denying the, the fact that Aaron Rodgers does, does not like this guy and feels as though his resume that he has put up with the team bears an, at least enough weight to feel like he needs to be heard and needs to have some semblance of control Within the team, as far as personnel is going to be concerned, um, he wants the general manager out. Pure, plain, simple. He wants he he wants to make it. You know, I mean, if he wants to f- play his entire career for and with the Packers, he wants to do it. Not necessarily as the general manager slash quarterback, 
but I think that he's looking at it from the viewpoint of he he wants more control over the the operations of the team. You know, as far as personnel is concerned, who do we draft? Who do we sign? You know, things of that nature. Well, this is just my opinion on the whole thing. But after a while, if you got a couple of years as a quarterback and everything, you're 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 basically helping. The, you should be helping the coach. Uh, put together a team that would work beneficial to you to win the Super Bowl. That's my understanding, and that's how I sh- I think it's like it's like any kind of leadership position when you're you know if you think about it, military style, you got an officer, which is probably the coach, and you have the high end NCO. Uh, yeah, you're talking like the sergeant major or whatever. Yeah, or guarding a sergeant or yeah, you're, whatever. you're talking about like head coaches here is like the colonel, but yeah, you got the sergeant major who really has his ear closer to the ground and knows what the hell's going on. Yeah, because trust your NCOs. That they're kind usually of thing. they're yeah. usually telling you, hey, uh, they want to put this guy over here. I've seen him uh, work and everything. He would actually work better over here. Mm-hmm. Well, see, within the within the NFL, or even in baseball, regardless as to what type of sport it is, I mean, the the, the way that the hierarchy breaks down, yeah, yeah. Well, you got the general manager who's there who actually does the signing, things of that nature. You've got scouting departments. Their responsibility, their job, literally, is to scout. It's in the title. They scout out other players. They scout out prospects. Uh, they travel ahead to the previous or to to the next week's opponent to kind of look at their, you know, look at their plays in in real time, and then they go back and they review film, things of that nature. Yeah, I think that from I don't want to say top to bottom, but I, I think that for the most part, I think Aaron Rodgers, the majority of his beef is yes, primarily with the general manager, but I think he might have some kind of. Well, it sounds like that the whole uh, that general manager has uh, is having issues with the, even the other players and everything. And if that's the case, then yeah, then there needs to be a players meeting or there needs to be an organizational meeting where they can do. You remember, like in the military, we had these things called sensing sessions. Yeah, where it was basically a gripe session with you know. It was it was a consequence free zone where you can voice your opinion about the command staff, yeah, the amnesty or the chain of command, and yeah, your amnesty. I mean, you were granted amnesty within the confines of that Which of that you session. Technically, you were granted well, even though yeah, you were, yeah. yeah, you were, yeah, you were. But I mean, maybe that's what they need to do because if if it's a systemic problem with players, multiple players on the team, um, and I need to turn my notifications down. Okay, there we go. Um, so yeah, Twitter going nuts. My Twitter, not our Twitter. Our Twitter. Okay. I'm trying to get that going. Anyways, moving back. Um, if it's a, a systemic problem within the organization where multiple players have expressed no confidence or a or general dislike for the general manager, then yeah, maybe that's that's an issue that that the ownership group needs to address. And in order for them to address it properly. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, it's a business. So in order for the owners to figure out what they need to do for the best interests of the team, is they need to get, they, I mean, they need to do their homework on it. So, I mean, and, and what the problem with this is, though, is that, that next month, I mean, we've got the June mini camps coming up. Uh, you got your OTAs. You got your, you know, uh, we might see a preseason with the God, NFL this year. got, like, like- Two more months until the actually preseason. Two, season. three, yeah, two, three months, and I think September is like the actual kickoff for the NFL season. But yeah, August, August is uh, the preseason games, and they start at like I think about two weeks after. Yeah, uh, something along those lines. But um, you know, I, 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 I think that overall, this has been it's been fleshed out in the public eye. And, and and I think that that's probably part of one of the bigger downfalls of the 24-hour news cycle. You know, we have discussed it a little bit. We've touched on it a little bit in some of our other I've formats. actually I've actually done an episode about all, all that. Yeah, so I mean, but with the 24-hour news cycles, like, it, you know... It, you're just bombarded with all kinds of stuff yeah. that you really don't. Now, in the sports world, stuff like this, that's in-house, and that's dirty laundry. That needed to be kept in house, and I'm not trying to fault Aaron Rodgers here because I mean, don't get me wrong, I like Aaron Rodgers. I'm not the biggest Aaron Rodgers fan in the world, 
but you know, and I'm, but he's not he's not going to get a pass just because he's Aaron Rodgers. I I don't care. There's Packer fans out there that are like, uh, he doesn't get a pass here. Well, then why so, are you talking? One of those situations, it's like yeah, it's like okay, why are you coming to the media about it? Because if you if you think that you're going to use your 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 status and your name as a kind of a leverage thing by taking it public and in hopes to get the result that you want. Any other time and in any other type of setting, in any other industry, that's going to cost you your job. Yeah. By 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 airing out the dirty laundry. I mean, it, to me, this. Well, it, while it might, some may view it as a power move, I'm kind of looking at it from the standpoint of, dude, that's kind of a dick thing to do. Because one, you're airing out your dirty laundry to the rest of the league. So, and it's not that the rest of the league isn't privy to it, because I mean, I'm sure general managers have freaking lunch together at some point, you know, I mean, and people talk. But that's all kept internally. Yeah, and in situations like this, though, because I, co- uh, I come from a background of uh, looking at this type of stuff and trying to react to it to the point where see if we can get some spotlight on something. Uh, like, uh, it's more or less one of those uh, spotlight things. It's like, are they just letting him do this so they can get spotlight on the Packers and people buy their stuff and everything? And you know, some companies actually do that. They'll air out something horrible and just put somebody on the uh, pedestal and say something like really messed up, just so they can get a couple of views and everything like that. Yeah, that's another another thing. Well, it's also the whole uh, Andy Kaufman and uh, uh, Larry the King Lawler type deal. Yeah, yeah. Oh. After after I re- uh, found out about all that stuff, I was, I was like, oh. You know, this is my third one today. Dear God, your heart is coming out of its chest probably sometime at the end of the day. And what we're talking about, and no, we're not being sponsored by them, but uh, the Black Rifle Coffee's uh, Espresso 300 triple shots. The RTDs? The, the, oh, my God, the, the Rich Mochas. Yeah. I so. didn't like the Rich Mochas, but I was like, oh, man, you should try the Caramel Vanilla. Caramel Vanilla. You, you know, don't like the, you don't like the sweetness of your coffee. I tried it because I ordered some of the the, the rich mocha RTDs, right? And uh, there we go. You, that's wholesome goodness right there in a can. Um, and then I knock it over. Look at me. I don't have a drinking problem. It's only a problem if you admit, you know, if if somebody tells you that it is. Anyway, so no, it's only a problem when you go to meetings. I don't think I've ever gone to a meeting, no. ever. Anyways, don't worry about it. Um, yeah, so I, I I had ordered some of this, but when you ordered through the app, for whatever reason, the app kind of defaulted and sent me sent me a twelve pack of the the caramel vanilla. So I called him, and I was like, "Yeah, no, I mean, I tried it. It's okay. It's just really not my speed." And he was like, yeah, you know, because the guy that I talked to, I, you and I had talked to him. Yeah. We, I had talked to him we before. Make friends. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. he's like, you know, so, yo, your email address is familiar. I said, oh, yeah, you're the White Sox fan. He goes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're in. Okay. So he goes, yeah, no, now that I'm looking at your, your order history, caramel vanilla doesn't really seem to be something that would be your speed. And I was like, yeah, no. He's like, well, give me a minute. So he goes and talks to his manager, and they come back, and like, he's like, they're like, yeah. Because it's considered a food product, we can't really accept a return anyway, so just donate that, and then we'll send you the rich mocha. And I was like, yeah, all right, cool. So I was like, oh, there's an Air Force base out here. He goes, yeah, yeah, the Air Force seems to be kind of basic, and that would be more of their speed. And I was like, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so <clears throat> that was funny. Um, we do like our uh, high-end stuff. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and I had just changed. I updated my... Uh, my coffee club subscription uh, last week where uh, I was getting the Freedom Roast mm-hmm. uh, every month. So uh, I just changed out my blend to a coffee or die. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. So that, in fact, actually, I think that just shipped. So um, along with my uh, two new, two brand new shirts from them that I ordered. So 
Yeah, there's a. I tried like a lot of their brands before, and we're getting way off topic. Oh, we are. But fuck it. Uh, but I ended up. Uh, All right. So before we do that, pure, plain, and simple. The whole Aaron Rodgers thing. Do I think that? Do, do I think that he needed to go public with it? Absolutely not. Do I think it's a dick move? Absolutely, I do. Do I think that it's a, a systemic problem from the top down within the organization as it relates to? Staff versus player relations, yeah. I, I think they need to get all that hammered out. I think they needed to do that internally. Um, do I think Aaron Rodgers deserves to get what he wants in order to play in a more comfortable environment? A part of me wants to say yeah, but the other part of me also wants to be like, you know, we all have to deal with dip bosses that are dickheads. Suck it up, buttercup. Throw the fucking football for a living and just move on with your day. If you don't like it, then request a trade. Um, he's got that option. Yeah. And there's teams out there that would be willing to pay the money for him to, 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 to get under center in their uniform. But I think is, is in, in, in with the way that free agency works these days, very rarely will we see a player play their entire career in one uniform. Um, it is kind of very rare. Yeah, and, and it's and you really especially you, nowadays. I, I want to see those days come back, you know. And, but the problem with the player unions and everything like that, I get that they're looking for the well out for, well, for the welfare of the player and things of that nature. But I, I think as far as players becoming free agents and and I, I think that the sport is almost unaffordable as it is as as it relates to. Um, it's almost as all that stuff because I mean, look at how many people are losing their jobs off the uh, the major news cable uh, outlets. They're getting rid of a lot of people that are like uh, right uh, high end paid uh, people, and those type of people are actually going to a different form of media, which a lot of people are, like podcasts and. Uh, uh, YouTube channels and everything like that. Right. Because well, there's still people that value their their opinion, which that's all it is. It's their opinion half the yeah. time. But, yeah, I mean, opinions are like buttholes. Everybody's got one. They all stink. Uh, I don't care if you wash it every day. I, I No, I really don't care. No, no, no. no. You, go ahead. But, Let me read this. No, I'm, yeah. Okay, I thought so. I thought, anyway. Uh -uh. That's what I get for thinking. Um, so, you know, everybody's got an opinion, all right? Whether or not you're right, it's your actually, you know, I mean, you're, you're just exercising your right to open your mouth, okay? Whether or not your foot goes in there is entirely based upon your research, your education, and how confident you are in that answer or that opinion. So, if Aaron Rodgers is ultimately not happy in Green Bay, he can ask, to be transferred. To be traded. He can ask to be released. Or he can do the mature, responsible adult thing, be a professional, and go to this go go to the ownership group internally, privately, and ask for them, hey, look, I'm not happy because of A, B, and C. What can we do about this? And then go from there. This whole dragging it out into public for ESPN, uh, uh, Yahoo Sports, you know, Barstool, it doesn't matter who it is. They, it, 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 that needed to be handled internally. Yeah, great. I mean, it, it's great for the reporting cycle. It's great for, for, for uh, you know, for, for uh, viewership. It's, it's, it's awesome for the click counters. But... You know, and into a degree, it's it's great for the entertainment value. Just be able to watch that train wreck kind of unfurl. But honestly, there's a lot of things that should not be reported on. I think this is one of them. And it needed to be handled internally. Aaron Rodgers chose not to go that route. It's unfortunate, but he had that he he, he had that option. He had that right. Um, I just sent you something. Yeah, and I don't think that it was the right call, but... You know, is what it is, and um, that's what oh, I was looking at. So, the article I'm looking at right now it's on a uh, CBS NBA. 
And the NBA explains the decision to not penalize LeBron James for violating league health and safety protocols. Which, right now, it's the playoffs. The only reason why I bring this up <clears throat> is, to me, it's kind of a double-edged sword a little bit. One, we're beating a dead horse is the only reason why I'm, I kind of don't want to say anything about it, but I do. Well, basically, what happened was he went to an event where people have to be vaccinated, uh, vaccinated for the uh, virus, and it got to the point to where even a negative uh, test too. Yeah. Well, it violates the NBA's health and safety protocols for right now, and they're in the playoffs and everything, and. One, I don't think the situation should have been uh, done to the point where it's like, oh, you can't play anymore because because of this, this, this. And it even, show, uh, thank, uh, even shows in here that he's not even vaccinated either. But it's to the point where it's getting ridiculous that we're even doing this stuff right now. That's my, one yeah, point. One. And 99 two, point whatever if, percent survivable virus you know but it's another point though to the point of hey he should still be accountable yeah if you have if i go out mm -hmm. go drinking and everything and i just try to to decide to go up on the uh uh drive home and everything i get caught by by the cops and i get a dui that's on me yeah no matter what it's on me i decided to go out i decided to go drinking there's no ifs, ands, or buts, or anything like the cop was doing this or the cop was doing. No, it's my fault. Mm -hmm. I'm the dumbass. I could have gotten an Uber. I could have gotten a taxi. I could have. I could have had a buddy of mine drive, and let him get the DUI. Well, I'm like not getting it. I yeah. mean, it's okay. it's a life changing yeah. event and everything like that. That's one thing I don't like about uh, people that are that. You're giving them this thought that they're above the law. When yeah. You do stupid shit like this. Now, <laughs> I think that, you know, one, okay, it's LeBron James. And, and I think that the current NBA commissioner is kind of maybe sort of a little afraid of him. Um, and, and, a little and afraid or intimidated just or, you know, because here's the thing. I think financially intimidated because of all the stuff that he's bringing to the sport, which and that a lot shouldn't of even matter. Is, yeah, because at that point you're nothing more than just a glorified whore. Because um, we've already established that you have a price. Now we're just haggling. Okay? Yeah. So, you know, with with the NBA with LeBron James. Okay, one the guy. And everybody wanted to make this big deal. He got so much play because he made a clutch three-point shot. It was like, you know, with, with you know, blind in one eye because he took a finger in the eye. I was like, all right, you know, dude, seriously, nobody cares. Yeah, you took a shot in the eye. You know, it, oh, you took a – it's your job. You know, you're out there. There's a guy, he plays for the Mets. He took a 94-mile-an-hour fastball to the face, and he was on the ground for 30 seconds. LeBron James bitches about getting poked in the eye. He's on the ground for a full 80 seconds. And then he had to have help getting up. Are you serious? You want to talk about, you know, it, it, the players back in the day, and as I, God, I'm gonna, I, I hate the fact that I'm about to sound like an old fucking man, but it's like, Back in the day, players, if they pulled ha if they if they pulled any of this shit, they'd get la they'd they'd get laughed right out of whatever league they played for. Yeah, like you get your soft ass out of here. You know uh, what is it? Um, Michael Jordan. I, I guess he was asked. He goes, uh, "Do you think that the '90s era Bulls could take on you know whatever super team it was that LeBron was playing for at the time?" And uh, Michael Jordan said, I don't know, maybe, but we're all like in our 50s and 60s now. Yeah. You know, and it's like, to me, 
Yeah, that might you might chalk that up as some kind of like bravado, but at the same time, that just that's a testament to the type of level of toughness that, at the very least, NBA players back in the day used to have. I mean, we're talking about players I like seen that one. Bill Lambeer. I mean, you get. I mean, it wasn't. It was not uncommon to hear about Bill Lambeer getting tossed out of a game or getting a technical foul handed to him because he threw a punch. You know, or and, and back in the before they had, uh, you know, Will Artest became Meta World Peace because apparently he went on some kind of eat, love, pray bullshit tour and found himself. It's like that guy was jumping into stands and punching fans in the mouth that were, you know, that were getting lippy. You know, it's like that was the kind of game that used to get played. Nowadays, it's like you get you you get King, you know, King Flop LeBron is out there laying on the ground for 80 seconds because, oh, he took a finger to the eye. It's like, you know what, dude? You took a finger to the eye. It's not worth going to the ground over. And at the very least, have the, have the trainers come out, <clears throat> throw some visine in your, fa- you know, in your eyeball, and sit out for about two or three minutes. You know, let your vision come back. You know, it doesn't even have to be two or three minutes. It's like, okay. Or at the very least, call a timeout, get your guy, you know, handled, and then get him back out on the floor. Or just suck it up and just push through. Yeah. You know, laying on the ground for 80 seconds. And then he twists his ankle, and instead of, like, kind of limping off, he's got to have two people carrying him off all fireman style. Are you serious? And then he wants to complain, I got cramps because the air conditioning in the building. It's like, you know what, fuck you, dude. You know, and I'm not trying to equate, you know, one 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 uh, one breed of toughness against another, but it's like, you know, we got st- we got still got guys that are deployed, wearing full body armor, in hundred plus degree heat, for hours at a time. Yeah, you don't see them complaining. Oh, they complain. Oh, yeah, they, they, we complain. They, we bitch. <laughs> we moan. But we keep on doing the mission. But we keep pushing through. You know, and it's like, oh, well, I got cramps. Well, fucking drink water. I mean, good God. Just because you make millions of dollars doesn't mean that you're excluded from hydrating. Take some personal and, you know, personal responsibility and exercise that initiative. Yeah. Pick up a damn cup of water. Make sure it doesn't have Gatorade in it. Just shove it down your throat. Who cares? Do your job. Do your job to the best of your ability. And if your best is not good enough, then go find something else to do. Yeah. Well, here's uh, another interesting fact nude. Oh, that, that got happened. heated. <laughs> yeah, that did. Uh, here's another interesting fact nude. Uh, pitchers Lucas Garado and uh, Jack Fullery, ex-high school teammates, go head-to-head for the first time ever in uh, pro baseball. You you use the word nude. Why did New. You... New. Oh, I was like, what? They weren't docking or anything, dude. I made <laughs> sure I didn't say anything messed up. Okay, good, 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 good. Good, good. That's like, uh, what is it, uh, docking? That's funny. <laughs> you it's just like, got uh, that? no, I mean, I get it. I'm sitting here going, I'm like, docking. Okay, so they have docking. It's like, no, I'm not going to, we're not going to tell those types of jokes on this show. Uh, anyways, <laughs> whatever. But yeah, it, uh, it was. Yeah, the first Lucas time. Uh, Galito and Jack Flaherty uh, met at uh, Guaranteed Rate Field. <clears throat> um, let me see here. Approximately Lucas. four hours before the White Sox played host to the Cardinals uh, Monday night's interleague series opener, the duo eventually got together with White Sox pitching coach Ethan Katz for a pitcher. It was a Harvard-Westlake High School reunion uh, with Galito and Flaherty having pitched together in that same rotation, uh, along with Atlanta's Max Freed, all of whom were coached by Katz. That's kind of cool. Uh, that period in Los Angeles was the precursor to the major league success, their major league success with Galito, Flaherty, and Freed all making opening day starts for their clubs during the 2021 season. So that's kind of cool. You know, so, I mean, it's like... Uh, that's a nostalgic moment, right? It is. It is. And it's very cool because it really, it, it, it you know, you, you get to see past the fact that these guys are athletes on a major league level. So you know, and it's almost like they're on. Una- it's almost like they're unapproachable. Almost like it's untouchable, kind of a thing. But you, you get to see, all right, these dudes, they were kids, 
And they were playing for the love of the game, and they were out there busting their ass during high school. One, to keep their grades up. Two, they were trying to win. Yeah. And the fact that all three of these guys pitched in the same rotation, and then they were coached by the same guy who's now coaching in the major leagues, that's a cool thing. Because that's, I mean, the closest thing that I could think of that we could maybe equate that to is that powerhouse down in Dallas-Fort Worth, uh, South Lake Carroll. I mean, South Lake Carroll's were, uh, uh, they, uh, uh, Kershaw, he, he pit. Yeah, that's where he went to school at. Okay. Um, South Lake Carroll used to be a perennial high school or state high school football playoff team. Um, but, I mean, it, it's, I mean, to me, that's, to me, that's kind of cool, man, you know, because it's like, especially for the coach, because, you know, the coach moved on, you know, to do things that he wanted to do, or maybe not so much as a player, but, you know, he's still at a major league level. Which is a testament to his baseball IQ and his 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 ability to 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 coach to teach. Um, but these kids here, I say kids because they're all younger than I am. Um, you know, they're out here. I mean, they all started. They opened. They did opening day for their respective teams. But they all they all pitched in the same rotation. So I mean, it's like, you know, you got to imagine how 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 cool it is for that school. I mean, they're. I mean, they're probably beating their chest pretty hard, you know. I mean, it, but when you get programs like that, I mean, you're going to have more than just, you know, just maybe like a handful of players. Um, like from here, uh, I think it's Chase Anderson and uh, um, Brian, uh, Brian Brazier, who played for Ryder. When uh, and now they're both in the major leagues. Yeah. Um, I forget who it is that Chase Anderson is is, is uh, pitching for now, but uh, Ryan Brazier, he still pitches for the Red Sox. In fact, he was on the 2018 winning World Series team. Um, but, you know, we, it, it it's kind of cool. I mean, especially to be from, like, an area like ours, like Wichita Falls, we got a town of 105,000 people. But to think that we've got somebody that made it, you know, that, that, that won at that level, and they, they, they're – they're labeled as a champion from that point forward. Yes, we've got we've got we've had people from this area go to the NFL and you know get that national no, uh, recognition. Um, we got a couple of guys that went to Ryder that played football at Ryder. They're one of them got drafted by the Cowboys, and the other one is uh, having a tryouts to make the team. Uh, J T. Barrett played okay. quarterback. Uh, he went to Ohio State, got drafted. Uh, forget where it was that he played football in the NFL for, but uh, really didn't kind of uh, have really so much that great, that great career. But now, Ryder High School here in Wichita Falls is potentially going to have two alums that are going to play for the Dallas Cowboys in the same year. So that's kind of a cool thing, uh, just to kind of be able to say, you know what, they're from my hometown. Yeah, that's cool. Um, but with this, with the with the three three pitchers, I mean, arguably, I mean, they're good enough to be starters in the major leagues. It, it just two of them being able to pitch off against each other, you know that 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 in itself is kind of cool. Yeah, it's to the point where, I mean, you get you get the whole uh, triage. Yeah. Of people, it's like, hey, look what we've done. Yeah. Uh, we we all came from the same background that or. or or we all came from the same dirt, and now we're we're here. We're at the uh, big big leagues. Yeah. Um, let me see here. Uh, da, da, I don't even that one. Let me see here. <laughs> Jacob Degrom. He was on. A... And is a little erratic early on. Hit the pause button here. Um, he. I mean, arguably, is the ace for the Mets. Uh, he went on the injured reserve li- or the injured list a couple of weeks ago. Um, <laughs> he had a rehab start in single A ball for the Mets. And when you're when you're at that level, everybody is a teenager. Yeah, I mean, eighteen, nineteen years old. Can you imagine being an eighteen or nineteen year old kid? Trying to start your major league career, you know your your professional baseball career. You show up to the ballpark <clears throat> to play a game, 
and you look at who you're going to be pitching or look who you're going to be hitting against that day. You imagine the look and just the utter despair and maybe overconfident, cocky enthusiasm that some of these kids experienced when they looked and they saw that they were going to be hitting against Jacob DeGrom. You know, <laughs> that'd be, that'd be and, you know and to be fair, the other team, you know, the minor league team that was facing uh, was you know facing off that that those kids were playing for that day. They tweeted out they were like Jacob DeGrom is here throwing 91 to 93 miles an hour somebody send help. They put that out on their Twitter feed and it was just it was hilarious because you know it was all in jest. It was really like kind of uh it was fun hearted. But I mean just seeing some of the video, he struck out 8 of the 9 batters that he faced in that game. I would be looking at that ninth. Yeah, it's like okay, so that that one kid who didn't strike out. I mean, what happened? Did he walk? You know, what's going on? There? Did he did he knock it out of the ballpark? No, uh, no, did no. Did he lose his head? But I mean, it's like even if you foul something off from from at that level, you know, I mean, you're 18, 19 years old. You're fresh out of high school. Yeah. And uh, you know, if you chose to skip college because you signed a professional deal and went to go, you know, play for the team that drafted you. And you're playing in their developmental league, and you get some major league caliber pitcher coming there for a rehab start. Even if I fouled one off, I wouldn't care. I made contact against that dude, and I will own that until the day I die. I don't care. Yeah. I mean, that would like okay, that would be like me stepping into the batter's box against Pedro Martinez, and it's like I love Pedro Martinez to death. I mean, he is died, hands down one of my favorite pitchers ever, and it has nothing to do with the fact that he played for the Red Sox. But if I were to step into the box against Pedro Martinez, and if I even just like foul tipped it into the catcher's mitt for strike three, and he held on to it, and I was out, I don't care. The barrel of my bat made contact with a pitch that he threw. I don't care. Yeah, and. Uh, you, know, you would take that bat and put it up. On I, I would. I'd, I'd frame it up like I foul tipped against Pedro Martinez, you know, and I would have it framed. I would have it. You know, I, I might even have it put in like epoxy and just have it encased forever, kind of like that mosquito from Jurassic Park, you know. Yeah. But, it, but other than that, there's not really. I mean, if we want to go into uh, MMA, I mean, uh, Cyborg, uh, Chris Cyborg. Uh, Keeps iron grip on top of woman's uh, pound for pound list with wins. Yeah, um, and she's a beast. Yeah, she is a legitimate beast. Because uh, she has a win over Leslie Smith mm -hmm. in the main event of uh, two fifty nine. I guess she hasn't uh, competed in a little bit, but she. I've seen her fight. I hate to be her husband or boyfriend. That's all I got to say. <laughs> well, what was it? It was uh, Ronda Rousey. She had this uh, this deal where she would she like it, she was very candid about it. She's a very wholesome person. Too. She is. She is. Now, when she was fighting, I mean, she was like I. She would talk about how she would have sex before every match, and. Uh, like, you know, as a guy, you're like, no, I, I need to save, one, that energy. Two, I need to save that testosterone and take it, you know, and, and then I can do it afterwards. I don't know, Swissner is totally opposite of that, though. Well, staying back, staying on track here, she was talking about, I mean, she would get into all kinds of things. Like, if you need lube, then I don't want you. You know, because that <laughs> means you're not doing something right, you know, and I'm just like, I, I can get behind that sentiment. I really can. <laughs> I mean, but, whew, yeah. Um. See, a, a lot of people, I was like, uh, when she first came on the scene as a uh, movie star, too, everybody was like, oh, she's hot. She's hot. I was like, she's a good person. I just don't find her attractive. Are you talking about Ronda Rousey? Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I, I think she's pretty. I think she's a good person for the most part. I don't know her personally, so I can't like make that definitive statement. Um, I know that she doesn't do the fighting thing anymore. Um, no, she's. I think she. she I think she even backed away from the WWE. Yeah, because she got pregnant. Yeah, yeah, because she wanted to have kids. 
She is big into streaming. Like, yeah. she plays games on Twitch. So like, she's a big World of Warcraft player. Okay, then I can get into her a little bit. She's a big World of Warcraft player. Um, she does... Um, I wanted to say she does Apex. I think she plays Fortnite and she plays Call of Duty. So, I mean, she's she's got her own Twitch channel. Um, I think she's actually on Discord also. But, I mean, she's, you know, and it's like you, you get these people that are like these larger-than-life personas and then you realize, oh, they're gamers. And it's like, really? What? It was like yesterday you were talking about how you, stere- you find yourself stereotyping people until you find out that, like, there's this mind-blowing fact about them. Yeah, like Henry Cowell and uh, Mia Kovitz. Yeah, you know, like for the longest time, she had a she had to keep on switching accounts and everything on World of Warcraft because everybody would find out it was her and like Cyberstalker. Yeah, you know, like you know Henry Cavall, he was like he didn't know anything about The Witcher until he got the role, right? And then he said he sat down and marathon no, played. To- Totally opposite. No, that's right. That's right. He that's right. He played the Witcher. He played and the Witcher. He freaking. That's right. And he went back through. He right. He went back through and played the Witcher three from beginning to end in one session, prior to starting the filming. And you know, it's like he's the nerd that we all deserve, yeah. right? He's the king nerd. One, he's Superman. Let me back off that statement. He's Kal El right now. Okay. Uh, don't at me. Whatever. Shut up. Um, nah, I believe it. There's so, only one Superman. It's Christopher, Reeves. Christopher Reeve. Exactly. So, uh, <laughs> like, this is why we call the show Nerd Sports. Yeah. Anyway, we get so heavy into nerd stuff. You know, we we get. I mean, he he's he's into World World of Warcraft. I mean, he's into gaming. Period. Uh, it, it, and like, there was a really obscure Firefly reference that one of his interviewers made. And he had popped off with like a completely mal response. Yeah. <laughs> and I was awesome. like, what the? F- yes, absolutely. Too much yes on that one. But, you know, it's like yesterday, you were talking about like you would look at me and you'd be like, the last thing that you would expect me to do is be, be a guy who collects pop funko. Dude, what we did yesterday. <laughs> it's borderline embarrassing, is what it is. Uh, it was a, oh, man. He, what he does is he goes in, he looks at the stuff, and he has an app on his phone to figure out if it's actually worth the buy. And it's like watching a person that's watching the stock market and everything like that, and judging and see if they should get this stock or anything like that. Yeah. Okay. So, but you know, it's understandable because you do it both for enjoyment. And mon- uh, money. It, 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 yeah. there, there, okay, so the guy behind the counter, his, uh, his assistant, was thumbing through a, a binder of magic cards that somebody was trying to sell. Yeah. And this dude had his phone out, and he was he was looking these cards up, and he's like, ah, maybe do a, a hundred or hundred and fifty at most on this binder, you know? And he's like, yeah, there's some cards in there that we could sell. I was blah, about blah, to blah. buy that fucking binder. Okay, so. <clears throat> I, I literally, I heard that and everything like that, and I was like... Well, oh, think I wouldn't have. Think I, I wouldn't have. If, if, if they'd have given us the opportunity, I totally would have. Now, what would I have done with those cards? I probably would have gone through them. Now, I would have broken the cards up, and I would have I would have sold them off. Yeah. You know, but... So, yeah, so there's there's an app. It's, it's, it's a Funko app. It's from Funko, and it gives you the ability to scan the barcodes on the bottom of the boxes. And you can create a list, and it's like, okay, so my wish list versus my collection, and then it gives you, you like know, your current only got market five value. More minutes, right? Yes, I know, okay. I'm working on it. So right now, as it stands, as of today, the 91 pieces that are currently in my Funko collection are worth at market value two thousand twenty three dollars. Yeah, my Cara Dune, my my Gina Concaro, uh Pop Funko from the Mandalorian. Is my highest piece right now at seventy five dollars? Yeah, what's, and I paid twenty three for it on Amazon. What's really sad <laughs> is about, that I get excited about it. No, <laughs> that I can get that excitement because you get the same excitement when I was getting into magic and everything like that, or some of the other stuff I end up doing. I'm just glad I I ended up getting to 
don't know. Gun gun hobby is freaking expensive. That's yeah, and, you know, but bow bow hobby. Yeah, yeah. Well, they are. It, <clears throat> yeah once the, you get all the stuff that you need, you don't really have to. Yeah, yeah. The the I, I'm I'm starting to find out that the 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 archery hobby, the the the, the bow hunting hobby is. Uh, yeah, that's going to become a thing. Yeah. Oh. What, well, well, dude? And I'm going to become one of those people that I absolutely dread, where I'm going to be like real hunters hunt with a bow. It's like, you know what? I like my guns too, man. I just now I can hunt every season that I want. My thing, <laughs> you know? my my thing is on that though. It is it. <laughs> someone goes like, "Oh, you're a bow hunter. You really like those?" Like, no, I just like killing those motherfuckers. He no. Really? No, no is, it's not even that. I mean, to me, I'm looking at it from the standpoint of like, you know, for years I've been wanting to get a bow, but because I'm left-handed, like my bow, I would have to special order it because you can't go into a store and buy a left-handed bow. Yeah, you can. You better be hard to, pressed. You have no, to go no, no, to you, a store that specializes in archery. No, uh, Cabela's. Okay, again, they've got an archery section. Okay, okay, okay. okay so, but and I know, I know, we're running short on time. So, but. With, you know, it, it's like, I'm looking at it from, one, the technical challenge, two, it, it's more of a, it, it's kind of like golf, it's more of an intimate kind of a challenge, it's more of an intimate thing, because, I mean, you're, the, the standoff, standoff distance between you and your, and, and, your, and your prey or your target is certainly a lot more up close and personal than it is with a rifle. Yeah. You know, because you can look out across the field, and you might be looking at like a three hundred yard shot, or a four hundred yard shot, and you know still have the opportunity to potentially down your target with a rifle. And it's also the the thing of highs and lows. Yeah, exactly. I mean, because you you can miss a shot, you think you had the shot and everything. A gust of wind hits with your when you're using a bow and everything, or the the animal spooks or something like that and starts running off. You get those lows when you're like, ah, why? Yeah. But when you get the target, you, it's almost like a it's, gay marriage a, right there where everybody's happy and everything, and you're like hugging each I'm other. I'm so, so glad that you used the context of the actual word. Um, so, you know, good God. Okay, anyways. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, to me... When I finally do get that first kill with my bow, that's going to be a more satisfying kill because I I worked for that because we had to physically get closer to the target, you know, because what, most shots are within, what, 50 to 70 yards, if that? Uh, You could probably pull off of 100 yards, but we're not even close to that no of, uh, i mean i'm not that confident in my but shot yeah but uh mostly well, plus all the kinetic energy that you would lose at that distance yeah uh you know, but so, I mean, usually, you, you, usually 60 yards yeah 60 to 50 yards right in there in that little buffer but yeah that's going to become an expensive thing for me and is it going to be something that i'll look forward to absolutely because you know i mean you spend the amount of money that you spend to get into that into that hobby to begin with even at just the ground level you well, see all that room getting, for expansion. If so. you're getting uh, bare bones and everything, and this would probably be the last part of this topic because you know, we're going to close it up and do the other one. Because <laughs> <laughs> we can talk hours on it. We're, and we're going to do an episode, uh, hopefully eventually. Uh, uh, either this week or next week, we're going to yeah. do a What the Hell from the Road because uh, there is a place we're going to give them, what the hell, some, yeah, exactly what the hell. Uh, a place in, in uh, it's called Just Knock It. It's a... Mm-hmm. Uh, it's in Vernon, Texas. It's about forty-five minute drive from here, so we're thinking we're going to try to do an episode from the road, uh, you know, on the drive there. And once we actually get there, and, yeah, actually get into the store, and uh, it's which reminds we probably need to get some waiver forms and keep them on hand, so that way when we're out there doing that kind of thing, we can have people sign the release, so that way we can put them up on our page, you know, on our channel without having a lot of you know I'll, blowback I'll, from them. But I'll, uh, I'll have there, there's a generic yeah. form out there, but yeah. But uh, no, it, it's it's the cheapness. If you want to go cheap and everything like that, you can go cheap and just start building up and everything like that. And yeah. then you can get. I mean, mine is probably the cheapest, best way you can go with my bow, because I got a bare bones for four hundred dollars. But my first bow was like uh, 
probably around about 500, but it had the sights and everything else in it. Yeah. But it got to it, it get it got to the point where uh, the cam had a chip in it. I didn't notice about it. And I had a, uh, it was, it was the week that I was going to, the weekend I was going to the Totally Archery Channel. So I was like, fuck. And I was just chunking money. So, but that's Nerd Sports this week, people. Uh, I'm David Dickerman. I'm Johnny Skelton. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and everything. Like, subscribe. We'll get this going. Yeah. Um, get involved. If, if you think that we, if, if, if you got oh, a hot take. A funny, we're going to have a funny one here in yeah, yeah. as weeks, soon as we get, uh, yeah, like hopefully so. Psychos and sociopaths. Right, so if, if you think that, you know, one of our takes is just completely and totally off base, let us know in the comments. Well, you know, what we'll, we'll, Yeah, we'll, we it, combat. Yeah. yeah. The, the next one that we're probably going to end up doing uh, here down, hopefully, here hopefully. down the road. Uh, it's, it's one of those ones, someone commented on it. We, we looked at the comment. We were going, okay, give us your take. Yeah. And we'll so, have you on. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're going to come at us with, you know, a hot take of your own, be prepared because we're going to interact with you. We want you to defend your take. And, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, you know, with a lot of the stuff that we do talk about, yeah, sometimes some I, I, some sometimes I, I find common. myself in over my head and, I, and I'll come off as sounding ignorant or un, un, undereducated about it. And I'll own that. But... At the very least, I'm willing to, to, you know, to stand up for that and kind of go into it with, hey, this is what I'm seeing from a face value. So be be expected to do the same thing. We're not discouraging the involvement with our channel, the interaction with us, because we're very approachable people. Uh, and, and the same thing goes for our channel. I mean, it's a very approachable channel. We're very open about, in fact, we espouse and encourage interaction. Uh, especially like a good debate. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, and, and and if you're down with it, yeah, we'll get you on Skype and we'll we'll get you on the show. So, um, but definitely, get, just you know, hit the subscribe button, give that bell or notification bell a smash, and uh, just get involved in the comments. Hit us up on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. We're on Instagram, yeah. And then uh, Twitter. We're getting our. Uh, I'm trying to get the Twitter account back up and going. Uh, so give us a give us a follow on. Uh, Twitter, I believe it is Angry Production One. Let me double check that yeah. real quick. If anything, I'll I'll get the stuff and compile it. At the end yeah, the end let me show. see here. Yeah, Ang- Angry Me Product One uh, at Angry Me Product One on Twitter. Right now, we've got five followers or, or one follower, but you know what? Um, it you know it, 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 take that first step into a much larger world. Um, yeah. Thank you, OBGYN Kenobi. But uh, <laughs> you're gonna love. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna love that shirt when it comes in. But uh, definitely give us a holler. Um, and until next week, we will see you guys later. All right, peace.